Welcome back, everybody. It's Tackle Tip Tuesday, and I have a little bit of an idea today. Uh, if you've seen Sunday's video, you'll know where I'm going. But uh, today I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to use that drop shot. I know I did a bass fishing drop shot video, but uh, this weekend I got on yellow bass, and I kind of figured out a little thing. So let me show you how to catch yourself a bunch of yellow bass on the drop shot. All right. So... As I stated at the beginning of this video, it's basically going to go, I'm going to go into depth, in depth, on how I was picking apart the yellow bass. Uh, I actually was fishing for anything that bit this weekend, and uh, I did get a couple big bluegills, which I normally, if you know if you're subscribed, I would be chasing those. Uh, obviously, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, this is a Tackle Tip Tuesday. Uh, done like 15, 16, 17 of them or something like that right now. Uh, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. Uh, let me know. That helps me with the feedback if I, should, if I should keep doing them. And obviously, comment below if you want me to keep doing them. Otherwise, you know, it's just kind of like talking for no reason type thing. But... I want to help you guys out uh, big time with, this is, so like the idea behind this whole thing for today's video is, this is simple. This is uh, kind of no brainer. You do have to understand how to fish, I guess. And Okay, uh, three main things I would think. You need to know how to cast a rod, you know how to set the hook, and you know how to feel for a bite. Uh, that's probably the most difficult thing if you've never really uh, felt for a bite like it's really hard to describe um, I mean you can describe it in a simple thing like so like I got this little GoPro wand here so my hand is here this is feeling for a bite if this is getting tapped I feel that tap over there it's transitioning through that the same thing happens with a rod uh, so when the line is getting tapped, when you have the right line set up, I like to hold my rod here, so split between my middle finger and my ring finger, and I'll take, well, it's either that or this one. It's it's hard, it's kind of instinctual at this point, but uh, you split the, the grip on an open bail like this, or a spin casting rod, and you put your finger somewhere in the vicinity of your rod tip, and if it transitions vibration, any like halfway decent uh you'll feel it now the big thing here is like i have a bunch of different rods for different purposes but uh for today's all intensive purposes like i have these listed in the link uh in the description below for anybody who wants to pick these up um it's a really cheap rod everybody that knows knows i use ugly sticks as just like a go-to beat around rod i have much nicer ones up there uh, my Apex rod has been kicking butt this year from uh, Tuned Up Customs. I love that rod. But for today's video, it's basically going to be... Uh, I'm trying to let you guys know you can duplicate everything I did um, on Sunday's video very minimalistically. So I have the reels listed in the description, the line, the rod, the drop shot weight, and the drop shot weight hook. Um, I'm going to get a close up of this. I want you guys to see, this is just, just one of those little tidbit tips. I'm going to give you guys in the tackle tip Tuesday today. Okay. So I've been asked a million times, like, how do you store your, uh, drop shot setups without it being a mess? So first of all, I have videos on this rod rack. So these are two separate rod racks. This is a standalone. As you can see, it sits inside that one. It comes out. And then I have my my wall mounted one uh, for my longer rods. Um, those are the I have those listed too, but uh, I have that just because it's too short in here for the anything I think longer than six foot. So um, basically, the reason I store these rods like this or those rods like that is so I can do stuff like this. So uh, I'll pull this out so you guys can see. So it's sitting in the little cross members and now I won't unwind it because you don't really need to have it unwound for me to describe this to you. But uh, this is a drop shot weight, pencil style, it's just a small light one. 
uh, when you're fishing and there's like no wind or anything like that, you don't need a really heavy one. But as you guys can see, what I did is I hooked the drop shot hook here and I just wind this weight around here. So like, I'll unwind it a little bit so you guys can kind of see. And you'd think it'd get all kinked up and you'd worry about it, but I've been storing drop shots uh, rods like this forever. Okay, so... See? Does it itself. Uh, you get really good at it, uh, flicking it and unwinding it, stuff like that. But so, for storing purposes, I'll leave a little extra out and stick it through there. And now, uh, let's see if I can do this without hitting anything. So now, when I put it in my upright rod holder, it hangs down there neatly. It's not flopping around. It, if you don't have it in there like that, if you don't have a place for it, what'll happen is it'll unwind and however much of your dropper you have out will basically get tangled in everything. And that's why a lot of people hate drop shot setups and they stay away from them, which is sad because it works really, really good. But uh, let's get into the whole, how I was using that to catch I think I caught 25 or 30 yellow bass, and anybody who likes action will want to stick around. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert some clips, and I'm going to try and describe them to you, uh, basically off of what I understood. And uh, I actually kind of described it in the video, so I'm just going to use those clips probably so that you get a better correlation of like what's happening and why you're doing it. Um, I'm big on making sure that you guys can duplicate what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. If you can't duplicate it, obviously you're not going to be able to catch the fish. So, we're going to try and go through this step by step and make it real easy. And obviously, this isn't isolated to just yellow bass fishing. It just happened so that everything that went together uh, the other day lined up to be a perfect drop shot white bass or yellow bass like targeting scenario so uh one thing i'm gonna go over real quick is um let's do if i can find a i have anything down here bruh well i'll just i'll have to show you guys basically i'll just use my drop shot setup that i was using this is the exact same rod so this is a uh, ugly stick light pro uh, medium I believe right yeah it's a medium action and like I said I have these listed below uh, it's fairly cheap rod and then the the real I have listed below too so let's see I'm gonna try and show you guys this in like real time without hitting myself in the face because uh, if you're not paying attention it'll do that so you get it going and I have gotten this down to the point where I can do that. So there's the drop shot weight. Hook is right here. So I'm gonna set this over this way because you don't need to see any of that stuff. So this is my uh, drop shot hook. Like I said, I'll link these in the description so you can pick them up. Uh, you can get them in pretty big bags, like 25 or 30 hooks or something like that. Uh, and it's a really good deal because it's a Gamagatsu and they are really good hooks, like period. It's very sticky and I mean, I very seldomly lose hooks, you know, hookups on those, but we're gonna go from where it's hooked and what I do, this is a different way people, people tie drop shots very differently. If you look up how to tie a drop shot video, I have one of my own uh, that's old and then there's plenty of other ones out there that tell you how to do like this loop knot and everything like that. What I actually end up doing, which I don't know if, I don't know if that'll focus on here. Yeah, it's not gonna focus very well on that. It's too small. Um, the, this is like an improved clench knot. So uh, the way this hook is tied on here is you do, uh, so, we're gonna, for all intensive purposes, top, bottom. So top of the hook, bottom of the hook. Uh, you go through it once from the top, 
back through it twice with the top, uh, through the top, but you do it with however long you want to do your dropper. So this is your dropper from the hook down to the, the drop shot. Um, you do it that long and you leave those two loops, you keep them pinched and you keep them open just a little bit. So you can see through both of those loops right there. Then you go around away from you on the hook, you go around four times. Don't do more, don't do less. I Just trust me. Then you take that tag in, which is really long. It's really easy to throw the line over. So one, two, three, four. You take the end of that line and you put it through those two loops that you have down here now, and then back through that, that big loop that you'll have. So it'll be one, two, three, four, and you'll have a, a big loop in there when you go back through those. And then you bring it back through that loop, and that's all you have to do. And when you pull it tight, you have to moisten this, lick it, whatever you gotta do, put it underwater. I don't care how you get it wet, just make sure it's wet. Pull it tight and pull this end so that this tightens up and that it is tight on the back side of it like that. So then you end up with this feed from there to there. That way your drop shot hook stays with that point facing up. And that's the secret to drop shot fishing really is making sure that your hook is pointed up as you're bouncing the weight along the bottom. The other part is really simple. Th these are just little clip weights and I'll have these linked in the description too. You can buy them in huge bulk things or you can buy like individual things. I recommend buying the bulk. It's cheaper. Uh, you will lose these every once in a while because the way they make this little pin clip thing here, uh, you can wedge your line in there and it's made so like if you get the sinker stuck on something, it comes off. I tie mine on so I'll wedge it in there once and I'll go around it, make a, a regular uh, overhand knot and then just tie the knot on there so that that's on there. That's not coming off there unless I break the line, um, which you'll see in one of the clips, I break the line. But this dropper on this one specifically, if you guys wanna duplicate it to a T, is about two feet exactly. Uh, it might be even a little less, so it might be like 18 to 20 inches. So that's what you got for uh, space from the bottom to where the hook sits. So it was about two feet up off the bottom if I had to say that's what it was. It, I, uh, the initial dropper might have been longer than this, but I still caught fish this way. So that's just one way of doing it. And then uh, let me get this put back and I'm gonna, I'll get you guys uh, that video clip that I'm talking about. And in the video clip, I literally talk about um, how I'm using this specific setup. So it's everything I have in my hand right here. Uh, you can buy the line, the reel, the rod, the hook, and the sinker. It's all you need. Uh, otherwise, I think I had red worms, and you should be able to get those at any local bait shop near you. Support local. Uh, but yeah, let me get to that clip. Uh, what I'll, I'll set it up as, so I figured out a little way of doing it, and I was saying to myself, if you can do it once, that's catching a fish. If you can do it twice, that might be lucky. It might be a pattern. If you can do it three times, that's a pattern. So I figured out the pattern and I kept sticking on, uh, sticking fish with that exact same drop uh, technique or whatever. Uh, here's the clip. So they're liking this pendulum thing. Cast it out as soon as the bait hits the water, you close your bail, keep a tight line. I think they're following it down and then hitting it. That one feels bigger. Is that a yellow? Yeah. They are fun to catch, especially when you get into a couple hundred of them. All right, so two times, not necessarily a pattern, but if we can do it three times, it's a pattern. So this is what I'm doing. 
cast out. As soon as it hits, shut this finger on here. Let it swing down until it hits bottom. And there, just hit bottom. I'm just kind of working it a little bit. See if I get any bites. Yeah, there's something down there. The thing is, is that kind of feels like the perch bite. It's really hard to tell. You gotta have just a little bit of slack in your line. There we go. <laughs> Short leash. That's a big yellow. Jeez. That's a tank for a yellow bass. These guys don't really get that big. Getting into white bass territory. I'm gonna get a release on this guy. Pretty big fish. Okay, so basically, like I was saying in that video clip, um, the two types of methods, uh, and actually it was, I know it was supposed to be one clip, but it's kind of like a, a mold or an excerpt from that day on the water. So that's the methods that I was using specifically for you guys to go out and duplicate exactly what I was doing. And like I was saying in the video, uh, two things were working every single time I did them. Uh, and it was, as long as you, I, I guarantee you, the thing is, is like you can't see the fish, so you're kind of just remembering where to cast, and uh, that's all on you. You guys have to figure out where the fish are staying and why they're staying there. But you guys can kind of duplicate it. Uh, I think I was in like 12 to 15 feet of water, and I believe there was a very specific break line, so I think it went from 10 to 12 feet, and there was no, uh, there's no flat or like mellow slope at 11. It literally went 10 down to 12. So like that, I think it's a shelf. I think they were sitting on a shelf or something like that or piling up just right there, uh, probably on bait fish or something like that. Anyways, I digress. The way that it was penduluming, eh, penduluming, yeah, back to the boat. Uh, what I was doing was, so I knew I was over 12 feet of water. So what I was doing is I was purposely casting out probably, you know, 15 to 20 feet but as soon as that sinker hit the water, you'd hear the bloop, I closed the bail. So what it would do, it was it locked that line tight and that bait would swing down and it'd probably give me, you know, 15 feet of swing to get down to 12 feet of water or 11 feet of water, whatever. So what I think those fish were keying in on was the bait moving at like this J shape so like that curve was exactly what they wanted. And uh, as soon as the bait hit the bottom, what I would do is, uh, so like say this is, this is tight, I would let it hit bottom and then I'd give it a little bit of slack. So like that much slack. And that was another method that I had fine tuned later on in that same area. Uh, Cause those fish will chase you to the boat and sometimes they'll just be nibbling and you'll feel that but you won't get any kind of hook sets and they won't steal your bait or anything, but you'll feel it. So if you feel them doing that, the other, 
Number two, uh, to duplicate with this exact setup is literally let it swing down, do that, and then hop it and do a little uh, like jigging strokes or whatever just to kind of get your bait to move. But you don't want the sinker to leave bottom, so you're just kind of moving the bait around down there, uh, staying in contact with the bottom. This takes practice. Uh, it's not going to be something anybody can just master in like 10 seconds. Some people can. I mean, if you guys do this and you master it in like 10 seconds and you know for a fact that you got it down, uh, hit me up on my Instagram. I want to see those photos. So tag me at DWSDave31. Uh, that's capital D W S Dave. So capital D A V E three one. Uh, I'll have it on the screen. But tag me, and I want to see those fish you caught using the drop shot method. I would kill to see that. I, I'd love to see that you guys actually went out and did that exact same thing. Uh, back to number two. It literally is. You get back to the side of the boat, and your rods, like at you know like a 45 degree angle you're just trying to watch your rod tip and your lines at that angle where it comes up to almost vertical what you're doing here is you're giving it just a little bit of slack and I don't I can't tell you why it was very specific like this but it worked and if you run into the situation it'll put more fish in the boat so what I was doing was I was bringing the you know hopping the uh, the sinker back so I actually have one laying right here. So I was hopping it back, and then once it got vertical right next to the boat, I was keeping the sinker touching the bottom like that. But what I was doing was I would give it just a little bit of slack. So instead of the line being tight to the bottom, I give it just a little bit of slack. So I'm guessing that like maybe the water currents or the way the bait would like flop around down there or something, uh, or maybe just because I was dropping the bait, it would just you know, just just the idea of bait dropping in front of a lot of fish, they attack out of uh, instinct. So that could have been just triggering a bite like that, but try that. Get it next to the boat and then take a couple, like may maybe two, three minutes and just kind of play with that. Cause you never know, there could be a bunch of fish that just came in and they're sitting there right in front of your boat now. Uh, kayak, canoe, I don't care what you're in. You're floating on a freaking tire and doing this. Uh, I want to see those Instagram photos if you're fishing off of a tire. That's That'd be entertaining. But I digress again. <laughs> if you're doing it and you're getting bites, uh, that little drop, wait till they load your rod up. And the minute they load your rod up, flick it. And those Gamagatsu hooks will do the rest. It's literally that simple. Um, I really hope this Tackle Tip Tuesday help some of you guys get out and do a yellow bass day uh, a lot of people don't know um where they are and that's the thing is like yellow bass are river system fish so any lakes that have river systems in and out of them uh any river systems that have wide spots in them or just like uh breaks and areas that you can find that you know where the fish might pile up this will work in almost all of those situations so Next time you're on a river system, give it a try. Like I said, hit me up on my Instagram. And obviously, if you haven't seen uh, Sunday's video yet, I'll have it at the end of this video for you guys. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I hope today's Tackle Tip Tuesday helps you guys land more fish. And obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, please just remember to... Yeah.